I'm Trevor Weatherhead and I'm Executive Director for the Australian Honeybee Industry Council. Today we're at Beryl's Farm which is on the Cunningham Highway between Brisbane and Warwick. There's about three or four different varieties of pumpkins here. There's the Podkins and they're ones that need pollination so they have a Jared Ale beside them. It's estimated that in Australia between four and six billion dollars worth of crops rely on honeybees for pollination and that translates roughly into about one in three mouthfuls of food that we eat relies on honeybees for pollination. Because the foods that we eat usually originate from Europe, we need a European honeybee to be able to pollinate these particular plants. With these pumpkins behind us, no bees, no pumpkins. The European honeybee was first introduced into Australia in 1810 when the Reverend Samuel Marsden bought some in from Rio de Janeiro. He put them in the governor's garden in Parramatta, but they did not survive. In 1822, a gentleman called Captain Wallace bought some in on the Isabella, brought them to Sydney, got them quite successfully established there. They were sold at auction, and they were the first successful introduction of honeybees here to Australia. We have over 12,000 beekeepers registered in Australia, and they own just over half a million beehives. Some of them are social bees, like our tetragonula. They used to be called trigonas. They live in a nest, like our European honeybees. The other ones are solitary or semi-social. A lot of them just live by themselves and you'll see them as single bees flying around. Within a beehive, we have three types of bees. You have one queen bee, we have a few drones and the worker bees, they're the ones that make up the vast majority. In spring, summer, when we have a very populous hive, we can have between 50 and 60,000 bees within that one hive. From egg to hatching out is 21 days for a worker. For a queen bee, it's only 16 days. For a drone bee, it's longer, it's 24 days. Inside the hives that we have with our managed colonies, we have what we call frames. So the queen is confined to that bottom box where she lays her eggs and the young bees are produced. The top boxes are where the honey is produced. The worker bee is the one that goes out and collects the nectar and collects the pollen. The, the nectar is collected into a honey sack in its body and brought back to the hive. The pollen is, is the male parts of the flower and they collect the pollen off that and bring that back as well. And some of the pollen on their body rubs off onto the female flower and pollinates that flower. Well, when you think the bees can come back from finding a source of nectar, some flowers on a tree, and they do a little dance to tell the other bees how far away it is and what direction it is. The bees bring it back, put it into the cells. It has a very high moisture content. They set up a fanning system within the hive to concentrate that nectar down into honey and reduce the moisture in that particular honey. And then they cap it over with beeswax. And so that's what we call our honeycomb. The beeswax capping is removed. Those frames are spun around. The honey flicks out onto the side of the container. And all you do then is strain it and put it into a container and it's ready to eat. Honeycomb is cut and honey flows out. Throughout the world, there is a mite that attacks the bees called Varroa mite. We do not have that in Australia. We're the last major beekeeping country in the world to not have the Varroa mite, and it's the viruses that get into the bees, and they then will kill the bees. The main thing is our quarantine procedures. So if you can keep the mite levels down, you keep the viruses down, and therefore you'll have your bees surviving. 